Hello and welcome to a new reading vlog. Um, excuse my voice, I am sick. I caught a cold, which is so annoying. Don't mind the dog in the background. Um, originally, my plan for this reading vlog was to do like a 24 hour readathon where I'm going to read all the Heartstopper books. Um, but then I got sick and I'm just barely kind of coming out of the worst of it, at least I hope. Um, so I don't really have the energy for a 24 hour reading thon, read a thon. Um, but I still kind of, I wanted to start this vlog. So this is going to be more of a read, but take naps whenever I want kind of vlog. Um, I call out of work tonight. I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the week. If I am going to call out or go in, but anyway, my voice sounds terrible and I probably don't look my freshest, but like I said, I wanted to just kind of get started on this vlog because this was my plan for the weekend and I was really bummed that I wasn't doing it. Um, and maybe kind of just relaxing and reading a comic book or graphic novel will kind of help me feel better. So, and you know, this is real. This is why wait until I get better when I could just make you all listen to my voice now. Um, I don't often lose my voice, so that's how I know I was really sick. Um, I do think I finally broke the fever, which is good at least, but man, it was miserable. <laughs> um, but anyway, I want to read Heartstopper, read volumes one through four. I have read them all, but I read them all on ebook, so I am excited to read the paper versions because um, I think the coloring is a little bit different. Um, and I am reading these in anticipation of the second season of the show coming out. Um, I believe when I'm filming this, it's about a month from now. So I am really looking forward to that. Um, so I thought, um, sick or not, I thought I would start doing a cozy little reading vlog where I probably end up taking a lot of naps and I'm in my pajamas the whole time. But is that is it that different from my usual reading vlogs? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'll probably read a little bit, kind of oscillate between reading and watching Netflix and napping. So um, I at least have today off. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for tomorrow. It kind of just depends if I spike a fever again or not, or if I feel like going. So we'll see. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that is my little update. Um, now it is time to go take my meds and start this book. Hello, a reading update. Um, so I took a bath today. I did some reading. I watched a lot of Cold Midwife. I'm still sick, um, but little update anyway. Um, I read volume one, also lost a nail, RIP. Um, I read volume one, really enjoyed it, of course. I love the beginning of their um, friendship. Um, and something I noticed, one, It'll never stop like amazing me how close the TV show adaption is to the graphic novels. It's just insane and so, so good. One thing I didn't realize, um, also I can't promise my cat's not gonna knock over my phone during this recording. She's watching the screen so confused. Um, one thing that I did not realize is that, um, I can't remember her name and we'll get to it in volume two, I believe, but the other friend of um, Charlie's, yeah, I'm losing my mind. The other friend of Charlie's, um, I can't remember her name, but she's gonna be the girl that's gonna be in Doctor Who now. Um, she's gonna be in the 60th special. Um, I can remember her name, what is gonna be in Doctor Who, it's gonna be Rose, but um, the character who moves to the girls' school. I can't remember her name, but I'll get to it. Either way, I didn't realize she wasn't in volume, in volume one at all, because that's one thing like in my head, and I thought in the show they were painted as like a very tight-knit, close friend group, yet like the three of them, um, Charlie, um, Tao, and her, um, like that they hang out all the time, yet I think at least half a semester passes in this book, if not a whole semester. Um, and it's never really, she's never brought up. So anyway, um, other things I enjoyed about volume one, I love how well these read and how each character with so little words has so much personality. Um, the other thing I really liked 
um, getting to notice more of the details on page rather than reading it um, like comic book style, like ebook style, I mean. Because um, I originally read it, just like rented these on from the library ebook versions. Um, I really like noticing all the details of like how she draws in emotions. I'm particularly thinking of this page. So this is Nick and Charlie's first kiss and just like the flowers and everything that like break away from the comic strips. Um, it's just such a unique way. Like you don't see that super often. Um, you see it in the show as well, like with the fireworks that pop on the stage or the leaves or little hearts drawn around. Um, stuff that's not really there, like all those flowers aren't really there, but it's just a way to like convey the story a little bit more. And I really, really love that. Um, and the flowers are maybe to represent that this is spring. This is the spring book. So um, overall, I loved it, obviously. Um, the other thing I didn't realize, um, I thought season one was just the volume one book, but I'm remembering now season one must be volumes one and two of the books. These feel different. Maybe this is just more pages, I guess. It might be printed on different paper, on thicker paper. Not to be that nerd, but I think it is. Um, any other book people do stuff like this? Oh yeah, it's definitely thicker paper. Interesting. Um, anyway, um, I am probably gonna go to bed soon because like I said, um, not feeling the greatest. It's having like a sick day reading vlog. Is this annoying? I don't know. Um, but it's what I'm really doing and I wanted to vlog these Heartstopper books and it just so happens that when I'm getting to them, I've been running a fever for a couple days. So whatever, you just get fever high me who's loving on Heartstoppers. So I'm really excited. I will probably, I don't know, part of me says like, oh, I'll just start this tonight. But I also know they only really take, what, 45 minutes to read. So I'll probably just read the whole thing. Um, and that way I can read volumes three and four tomorrow. Um, I'm probably going to call out of work tomorrow too. I don't know. I can't decide. It's stressing me out. But you know what I'm going to do for that? Read Heartstopper. So I'll check that, check back in with you when I'm done with volume two. Hello, another reading vlog update. It is the next day, the next night. I'm feeling quite a bit better, even if I don't sound it. Um, but I did read volume two last night of Heartstopper. I really enjoyed it. And I was right, I do believe this kind of volumes one and two cover most of season one. Um, I really liked in this one, the like slow development of the relationship and how um, they get to kind of just learn more about each other. I really liked it. I liked um, the movie theater scene a lot. It's a really hard scene to watch in the show especially, but um, I just thought it was really well done. And my favorite scene in probably all four volumes and my favorite scene in the show, and I think part of it in the show is just the absolute charm and honesty that Kit Connor and Olivia Coleman bring to the characters is when um, Nick comes out to his mom, um, Nick being Kit Connor and uh, Olivia Coleman playing his mom. It is just one of the most perfect scenes ever made in television. It's so exciting um, and just really, really, really well done. So I enjoyed rereading this. Um, I also really like the beach scene at the end. Um, one thing I forgot to say, this is just to kind of show you like her art style if you haven't already seen it. Um, I have this problem with pretty much all graphic novels and comic books. I am not a super visual person. And so a lot of the times, other than the main character, I have a hard time differentiating the other characters, like remembering what they look like. Um, and one thing I do like, she, um, Alice does label the characters a lot. Like she'll put a little mark off to the side. I don't know if I'm gonna find a page where she does it, but um, when it's a secondary character, she'll label them off to the side, like, oh, this is so-and-so. And like, I'll remember that name and know that he's one of the other students on the rugby team. Um, but I didn't remember what she drew him to look like. And especially her style's a little more simple, like it's a little more cartoonish. Um, in comic books, sometimes it can be a little more different because the, the costumes are so much more detailed and like colorful. And I'll remember like, oh, this character is wearing 
purple corset as their costume. I don't know what character wears a purple corset, but like my point stands. And so I'll remember that, even if I don't remember like their facial features and their hair color and stuff. Um, and because she also doesn't, she only uses this like green scale of color. So that's one thing. Sometimes I just have a hard time remembering what everyone looks like. Whereas in like when I'm reading a book that's all text, that's not a problem. Um, but I had the same issue. I'm reading the Avatar comics right now. There's some like bonus books that are um, that were written for between Avatar 1 and Avatar Way of Water. Um, and that one's even harder because even though there are very detailed pictures, all of the Navi look the same. So um, especially the two brothers are really hard to tell apart in the comic book. Um, and you just kind of have to figure out context clues. Um, but like I said, I am feeling better-ish, um, feeling better than I did last night anyway. So I think I, as long as nothing changes in the next 20-ish hours, um, I think I am going to work tomorrow night. Um, so I have to stay up kind of late tonight so I can sleep more during the day tomorrow because I work night shift. Um, so I'm going to take another bath. <laughs> the one thing that like one of the only things that makes me feel better when I'm sick are bubble baths. So I've taken like 10 of them, but i um, gonna read volume three in the bath. Um, now that I'm realizing the season one covers volumes one and two, I'm realizing I don't know what happens in volumes three and four. Like I can't remember. I know there is a trip to Paris. That's all I got. I believe that's a lot of what this one follows. Um, so, and then I did watch episode one of the show, just for fun, and I probably, I'll probably i finish rewatching the season before I start season two. Um, season two comes out August 2nd, which will be right around when this video uploads. Um, so very, very excited. It looks so good. And then I read on Alice Osmond's Instagram today, she is in the process of writing and working on season three. So we get a series season three. I love that. Um, and... The fact that she's a writer on the show makes so much sense now. I didn't know that before, that why the show is such a beautiful adaption of the book. So, very excited about that. Um, and I just love these characters. And you know what, speaking of comic books, this is this is just a bonus little aside, but the two actors in the show, um, I can't remember the actor of who plays Charlie, but Kit Connor plays Nick. I. And maybe they wouldn't want to do this because these actors have already acted together, they've already played a couple together, but if I could somehow temporarily be in charge of casting at Marvel, I would cast those two as Wiccan and Hulkling in the MCU because they would be so perfect. The actor who plays Charlie just gives Wiccan vibes. He's like the skinny kid with dark hair who doesn't really know his place in the world literally that's Billy Kaplan and then um Kit Connor looks so much like what Hulkling looks like he has red hair Hulkling has blonde hair but that could be fixed and doesn't really matter that much um and like he could really capture that Hulkling has that like big teddy bear like kind of personality golden retriever type of vibe um but like also struggles a lot internally throughout his story because of where he comes from and all of that and this is not comic book reading vlog but I've got some of those on my page if you want to watch them um a lot of where I read Young Avengers um so I just think they'd be so perfect and I know it's not really realistic to hire two actors that have already been together like that I don't know if that's like a thing that happens but I would just love them so much but anyway I'm gonna start volume three um read this and then I will finish volume four tonight as well and I'm just really excited this one is so much longer but um like I said, because they're graphic novels, they take less than an hour to read. So, and I'm trying to catch up on my Goodreads goal. <laughs> so, I'm currently six books behind. Um, this will catch me up a little bit, um, but I, I don't know. And then all the books I'm in the mood to read right now. I mean, I'm enjoying these Heartstopper books, obviously, but I'm also like really in the mood for like fantasy. And those are not books you can just fly through when you're trying to catch up on your Goodreads goal. But anyway, um, that's my little update. I'm going to go have a little relaxation time, make sure my body truly does feel well enough um, to go to work and everything. Um, but I'll update you when I'm done with volume three. Hello, an update. Sorry the lighting is not great in here. It's two in the morning. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, but I finished 
volume three. I think of what I remember, I think volume three is my favorite. I just love the trip to Paris so much. Um, so many cute things happen in this book while also introducing some of the heavier topics that the um, series addresses. And I've talked about this on my channel before, I believe, but my favorite, favorite thing about Heartstopper, one, it's adorable, two, it addresses serious topics in a way that does not diminish them or lighten them, but in a way that, like, in such a hopeful way that it makes it so much more palatable to read. And it doesn't, that almost makes it sound like it loses some of its meaning, but it doesn't. These topics are still just as serious and just as meaningful, but their stories and the way that it's written is just told in a way that you can digest it and not get that like heavy hard feeling in your heart like you can digest it and you can understand it and you can connect to it without being depressed yourself so um if you didn't already know trigger warnings for depression self-harm and eating disorders in this book um the way that nick describes um like his mental health and his relationship with food are always just it's just so it's hard to read, but like I said, like the way that the support that comes from Nick is just so amazing. Like I said, the trip to Paris is just so fun. Um, the other thing I was thinking about, um, I was like, it's so wild to me that a group of like English school kids could just take a road trip and go to Paris with their, like as a school trip. Like I'm from the States obviously, and we didn't take many school trips there was like extracurricular stuff that I did growing up but and this was an extracurricular trip not every student went but um you didn't drive anywhere <laughs> you can't just drive places that are really worth going where I am um to get out of the state it's like four hours drive at least um depending on the direction you go so it's just so funny to me and then that just brings you to California so I guess the only trip I did do driving in school was to Disneyland so um, but overall, love this story, and I think part of the reason I love the Paris um, story too is it really pulls in a lot of other characters, um, and I think what's so interesting, I think graphic novels in general accomplish this really well when they're well written, but Alice specifically writes this so well in that there's not a lot of words on the page, um, but she still fully forms all of these characters so well. So I just really, really love it. Um, I really loved getting to know the two teachers. I really hope they include that in the show because I really enjoy them. Even though it's such a small detail, I just really, really love them. Um, and getting to see like the beginning of what could be a relationship between them. I enjoyed getting to know Tara and Darcy a little bit more. Um, and then obviously Tao and Elle kind of start the relationship in this book, which I'm so excited to see in the show. Um, I love them. And I really think Tao is such a complicated character. And I wonder what, actually, if their birthdays are in the back. I'm going to look right now. Because I was going to say, he just gives me Taurus vibes. And that's coming from me. I am a Taurus. Because um, sometimes he says things, I'm like... That was such a dumb thing to say, but also that's exactly what I'd say. No, his birthday is September um, 10th. I mean 23rd. He's year 10. Anyway, um, I really like seeing their relationship develop, and I like the conversation between Tao and Charlie about, like, when when Charlie is um, telling him about his relationship with Nick. I th it's just a really interesting conversation, and I like the accountability that they both take. They both apologize, they both forgive each other. It's really, it's, I really like it. Um, the one thing I did notice, which I didn't notice in volume two, even though this character is in volume two, is Alid. I think they changed his name in the show and I'll have to like pay attention closer in the show. Um, I think it's the same character, but the character in the show, who's like the third friend with the blonde hair, he's always reading books. I swear to God, they call him Isaac in the show but I think it's the same character as Alid in the book, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that name right, but um, 
Anyway, he also had kind of a hint at something at a relationship that he has, which I don't think is brought up in volume four, could be brought up in volume five, which is not out yet, but I did pre-order it today. It comes out in December. Maybe I'll do a reading vlog for it. Um, and then he, um, uh, but anyway, I would like to see more into his relationship. I think that would be interesting. Like he could have his own spinoff is what I was going to say. Um, I think all of these characters could have their own spinoff. And I know she has a lot of other books that I haven't read. And you know what? Maybe he does have a spinoff and I just straight up don't know it, which is fully, fully possible. And now that I'm saying it, I think it might even be true. Um, but I've only read the Heartstopper books. I haven't read anything else. I'd also really like to read the book about the sister. I think she has one as well, Charlie's sister. Um, and then if there was like a, a book just from Elle's perspective or just from Tao's perspective or like traded between the two of them I think that'd be really cool and then if she ever wanted to like jump into like an older character um the two teachers I think would also be really fascinating especially the teacher who didn't he was saying like he never snuck away with a boy when he was in high school because he didn't come out until his mid-20s he's only 26 at the time of this book um that character I think would be really really interesting um clearly I'm not great at remembering people's names but um overall love this one it's so fun the other thing i noticed because with them being on the paris trip she kept showing like instagram posts and all that and that's a pretty heavy theme throughout the show and the books um and I, my favorite thing probably and maybe this is part of why i think heartstopper resonates with so many people is that they are teen books written by someone who was actually recently a teenager um she was born in the 90s and so i think she's able to connect that younger like Gen Z type of humor so much better than some other YA novels um like the lingo she uses in text messages the 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 text message lingo that would actually make it into spoken conversation realistically she does that correctly um the way just the way that they text each other like what's capitalized what's shortened all of that it's it's what would really happen in, with real teenagers of this age um, and sometimes like there are books, books even that I love, but there are YA books that I'm just like, teenagers don't say that. They don't talk like that. And the one that comes to mind, I love her. I love her dearly. But Becky Abertali, the first time I read, um, Love, Simon, I can, or whatever the original title is, love that book. I do. But for the entire novel, she kept calling Tumblr the Tumblr. She always was using the article the before. I'm like, no, why? I don't care if it's grammatically correct. No one says the Instagram, the Facebook. Do older people say that? Maybe it's, I don't know. Um, and she's not, she's not that much older, but um, I think anytime an adult writes a current day teenager, sometimes the stuff doesn't come across completely normal. And that happens in teen movies too. I think of uh, the movie The Duff. It's a fun movie, but some of the teenage stuff, like, she's like, I'm unfollowing you on Pinterest, all that stuff. It was, oh God. Um, but Heartstopper perfectly captures what it, like how a teenager with the internet and texting would truly communicate. Um, but anyway, I'm on a roll and I'm not too tired yet. So I'm gonna read volume four and then I will check in with you to close out this vlog. Time for one more update. I keep moving around the room like there's gonna be better lighting somewhere and there's not, so sorry about it. I read volume four. It's like 45 minutes later. Um, this one definitely is a little bit heavier. It covers some harder topics. Um, the table moved. Um, but I still really, really love the way that it approaches it and how it kind of shifts a little bit. Let's it be more from Nick's perspective, whereas the other ones I feel like are more heavily Charlie, Charlie's perspective. Um, so I really like that. Um, they didn't get to focus on the other characters as much. I would really like, I'd read a spinoff series for each character. Um, there was a cute little bonus thing with the two teachers at the end. That was fun. Um, but overall, I do still really love this one. There are some important um, like character developments, um, like with Nick and his dad um, and just uh, Charlie and his sister. I think their relationship, I think there's still a lot more to happen in that relationship. Um, so I'm just really excited for volume five. I believe volume five is going to be the final installment. And I know it's been releasing, I think it releases week by week on the, I can't remember the name of the app, 
the webtoon app um, but I like reading them all in one I'm not a week by week kind of person so um, overall still really loved it there was a lot of cute stuff in this one um, I feel like the one, one some of the other characters weren't in this as much um, some of the friend characters because a lot of it happened kind of outside of school for this one um, there also are characters that I think maybe come up in some of her other novels because there are books that happen in this world that she's written um, that I would probably get the picture of if I'd read the other ones and they're on my list I just haven't gotten to it um, I really liked this page because all the pages are white except for like the whole page is a different color and she said sometimes people need more support than just one person can give that's love darling I thought that was really cute um, overall, yeah, really liked it. I, like I said, this one was very more introspective and a little bit deeper. I don't want to say darker, because that implies there's like some lack of hope, but um, it is covering more intense topics in this one, but I still really enjoy it. Um, and it's still, I've said this before, and I will just continue to say it, Heartstopper so incredibly is like it just it is able to cover topics like this in such an incredible way is what i'm saying but it's three in the morning and i can't form sentences um i think it's just it's just i don't know just the charm that she writes with and the the heart is just something i feel like we don't get to see super often this like this honesty and vulnerability and um just really really great storytelling and really great characters and it proves something that I really like um and I don't know if everyone will follow my train of thought on this but there's a lot of media that like even if it's really important media and it's telling a really important story that I just can't I can't watch it I can't read it whatever it is um if it's something that's just too violent or um, just too sad. Like there are a lot of um, books that are like, oh, this book is gonna make you cry. Okay, then I don't wanna read it. <laughs> um, I don't, I've, and I've seen people kind of, there's various terms for it, but um, this like, like collective um, consumption of trauma um, and that's not to say that these conversations aren't important and I feel like my sentences just keep getting more confusing because I'm so tired. Um, but like these conversations need to be had but sometimes the way that they are presented in media like why do we have to talk about it like that? And I know that it is probably like that in real life. It is that traumatizing but I like it's just not something I'm almost never in a place where I can comfortably consume that and it not affect my own mental health um, so that's why I think one of the biggest reasons I love Heartstopper so much is because it approaches these topics in a way that doesn't also necessarily need to um, intimidate the reader so much um, so that's why I really 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 like the way that it um, approaches mental health and all that other stuff because there are other books that I've read that I do have good at representation of mental health and everything um, but there are also books that I've read that were just way too much and then there are books that just like don't represent it well but um, I really I really like the conversations around mental health in this book um, I like Charlie's reaction to like getting into therapy and everything very accurate and you said I can't remember what he said exactly but he's like um his therapist he's like i don't know how to say the name i think it's just pronounced jeff but it's spelled differently he's like jeff C said i need to start writing my journal more and he's usually right about things which is quite annoying it's like that's an accurate representation of like when you were supposed to be listening to your therapist about something like i could i have probably said the exact same thing like well I'm really anxious about this, but like, I'll think about it. Well, what would my therapist say? She'd say just to think through it or whatever it is. Um, and it's usually annoyingly right. So overall, 
really, really love this series. Um, I cannot wait to see um, season two of the show. I'm really, really interested to see because I feel like volume three covers so much but it's actually not that long amount of time in the book like the Paris trip is a week long and it kind of just covers the Paris trip there's you know a little bit before a little bit after but um whereas this book covers a lot of time in months but like I mean and a lot happens but not a lot it also skips a lot of time so I'm interested to see how they kind of split that up is season two truly going to be volumes two and or three and four leaving volume five for um, season three or are they going to put volume four with um, volume five in season three I'm not really sure um, and I don't know if I've even watched a trailer for season two to be honest so either way I'm so excited. I can't wait to see how they do this. The actor who plays Charlie, I just know is going to do incredibly well. Um, I'm also really interested to see um, Nick and his mom have a lot of interesting, like really touching conversations in this uh, volumes three and four. So I'm interested to see those on screen because I mean, Olivia Coleman um, and Kit Connor as well is phenomenal. So I'm just really excited. I'm glad I did this little reread. It boosted my Goodreads goal for books. I'm still majorly behind, but you know. Um, but yeah, I love my little Heartstopper books and I love these characters. I love the author. I love the drawings. Um, and I just think, I just think they're so sweet. Um, and like, I just don't know anyone who would not enjoy these. Like, I just don't know anyone who could read these and hate them. They're just so perfect. Um, so yeah, that's my little Heartstopper reading vlog. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for enduring my sick voice and my sick face. Um, and the fact that I was in my pajamas this entire time. I've, I've never, <laughs> I don't think I've ever vlogged sick. Um, and I've definitely felt and looked sick. Um, I've got, I, every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, hmm, well, I'm a pale person, but I'm definitely paler than normal <laughs> recently. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And it's part of my real life vlogging experience of when I was actually reading these books. Because they were my little cheer me up while I was sick. And I'm still sick, but I'm feeling a lot better. So, a lot better than I was two days ago, anyway. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I upload videos whenever I get around to it. I hope you enjoyed. Um, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!